Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, why don't we just begin to give God glory and honor that he is due. For he is worthy. 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 From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be glorified. It's to be praised. Come on, give his name some glory in this place. Come on, lift him in this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Get thee behind. Victory today. Victory today is mine. Let's sing that again. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Get thee behind. Victory today. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Look at your neighbor and say, it's mine. Look at somebody else and say, it's mine. Now look at them and say, what do you got? You ought to answer back and say, I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I don't know what you're facing, but look at somebody else and say, I got the victory. Come on, why don't you stand as we enter into a time of prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have given us another chance to give your name glory, honor, and praise which you are due. We make your name great in this place. We invoke the name of Jesus because we know that at the name of Jesus, hallelujah, sickness has to bow. At the name of Jesus, sickness has to flee. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble at your name. So we invoke the name Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus the Christ, son of David, Jesus. Come on, saints, cry out Jesus this morning. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus in our homes, God. Jesus on our jobs. Jesus in the schools, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we invoke your name this day, God. And God, we are asking, God, that you would move in this place, God. Move how you want to move, God. In the name of Jesus, from the pulpit to the door, God. We believe you for manifestations of miracle signs and wonders, God, in this place. So, Lord, we step back, God, and we say, have thine own way, God. Have thine own way, God. Have thine own way, God. Hallelujah. We expect great things, God, right here in this service, God. Bless the preacher of the hour, God. Bless our leadership, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask for fresh anointing, God. In the name of Jesus, breathe upon your people afresh, God, today, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we give you name, glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody glad to be in God's house on this morning? Is anybody grateful to be in the house of God on this morning? Hallelujah. He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus.
shackles, no more chains.
Hallelujah. We just came to give him glory. Amen. The song says, Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. Oh, 
hallelujah how many know that we serve a holy God I said he's a holy God I can't find no fault within him he is a holy God and his name is excellent come on why don't you look at your neighbor and say neighbor we serve an excellent God there's no searching of his understanding hallelujah great is his mysteries he's a holy and righteous God and we give him glory honor and praise because he's holy he's holy I said he's holy I said he's holy he's holy he's holy he's holy yes he is I'm so glad that he gave me his righteousness for my righteousness was as filthy rags but he clothed me in his righteousness saints anybody glad about that this morning that he redeemed you you weren't holy yourself but he made you holy hallelujah thank you Jesus so welcome to youth Sunday Christ gospel I said welcome to youth Sunday again Christ gospel welcome to youth Sunday hallelujah we the young people at Christ gospel church has come to take over a little bit if that's all right Bishop um, First up, we're going to have our scripture reading by Brother Stephen Claiborne. And then we're going to have Brother Eric Burden come and give us our prayer. Jesus. I am reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 10 and 11. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe for his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. God bless the service. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Next up, we're going to have our welcome by Sister Serenity McCarty. Praise the Lord. My name is Serenity McCarty, and I would like to welcome you to our Youth Explosion this Sunday. I hope you enjoy. Amen. I hope you feel welcomed. Hallelujah. So next up, we're going to have our youth speaker. I'm going to give a little introduction. He is an athlete. He, is, uh, 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 he, he does drama and all types of good stuff. So next up, we're going to call up Brother Ortez. Artez, Lord, help me, Jesus. Brother Artez is coming at this time. And he's coming back, to going around the back way, so just give him a minute. Give him a hand as he comes. morning and praise the Lord everybody thank you miss Angie for asking me to share the scripture on this youth Sunday miss Angie texted my Mimi to give us the Bible verse for this youth Sunday she texted first Thessalonians fifth chapter 18th verse my first reaction was one who now I know it's first and not one I have never heard of this book in the Bible, but I knew that Graham would help me. What a homework assignment that was. <laughs> Chapter 1 opens with a greeting. Thanksgiving to God for the Thessalonians' faith. Try saying that three times. Verse 2 says, we always thank God for all of you mentioning you in our prayers. 
This is Thanksgiving time. First Thessalonians, fifth chapter, 18th verse says, it's the will of God for us to give thanks. In this story today, Timothy had just come back to Corinth where Paul and Silas was and gave them the good news about the people in Thessalonica. About their faith, their love for God, and that they had stopped worshiping idol gods and started telling everybody about Jesus Christ. Paul, Silas, and Timothy wrote a letter to the Christians in Thessalonica, letting them know that we always thank God for you and mentioning you in our prayers. At the end of my NIV Adventure Bible, they give exercises called Let's Live It. An example of an exercise might be to find a pen pal and write to them, telling them about the good news. So I thought I would use two of my friends. And we are all the same age and in the same grade, and I thought I would ask them, what are they thankful for? Amir Hubbard says, I am thankful for my family and my friends, because without them, I wouldn't have had anything, and they helped me to do things better. Jaden Farrell says, I am thankful for my family because they got my back for everything. I am thankful for my friends because I trust them. And I am thankful for basketball because it taught me to listen. Then I asked my favorite cousin, Logan Thomas, who is older, graduated college, and got a job. She says, I'm thankful for the constant and unconditional love I receive from my closest family and friends. I'm thankful to be able to make a difference in the STEM world as a young black woman. I'm motivated each and every day to be the best I can be because of my loved ones and my desire to make my mark. Then I, Artes, said, I am thankful for life because I am learning what and what not to do. I am thankful for basketball because I don't know what I'd do without it. I am thankful for my friends, family, and church because they bring me joy and happiness. Now that's good news. I'll leave with you this morning, 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, 18th verse. From the King James Bible, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Then the Teen Life Application Bible says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for who you belong to Christ Jesus. Precious Moments Children's Bible says, in everything, give thanks. This is what God wants you to do because of Christ Jesus. So I say, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. But my question to you this morning is, what are you thankful for? Try 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Amen. <laughs> Man, give it up for Brother Artez. Is anybody thankful this morning? I said, is anybody thankful this morning? Why don't you lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your heart might be aching. Thank God that you got a heart to ache. Your bones might be hurting. Thank God you got bones to be hurting. Hallelujah, there's so much to be thankful for. The fact that you got breath in your body. Woo, glory to God. You ought to give God praise right there just because of that. Because he woke you up this morning. I know it's simple, but he woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Told you in your right mind. 
for that we give God glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. Next up, we have some talented young people. Hallelujah. So we're going to call two of our young people to render their talents um, first. Never mind. We're going to have one of our young people render their talents. We're going to have Sister Ashley Michael come up and render a selection before our sermonic solo. After that, we'll have Pastor Lawrence Burden come up and deliver the word of the Lord. Amen, amen. How many know that God is mighty? God is mighty. Amen. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, 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 Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Anybody know he's worthy? Say, Lord, you're worthy. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Say, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Say, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord. Say, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I need you. Anybody need him? Say, Lord, I need you. Say, Lord, I need you. Say, Lord, I need you. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You said to God. Is able to do 
just what he said he will do. Two weeks ago, I lost my job, but guess what? He's going to fulfill. On Monday, I got my job back. Every prayer mess to you. You know what he told me? Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Could you look at somebody and just say, he's able. Come on, look at somebody and say, he's able. Come on, look at him and encourage him and say, God is going to do just what he said he's going to do. Look at somebody and say, he's coming through for you. He's coming through for you. Encourage them. He's coming through, first lady. He's coming through. I don't know when. I don't know how. But I won't give up on God. I won't give up on God. I won't give up on God. Is anybody touching the ground? I won't give up on God. I won't give up on God. I can't give up on God. (laughs) Anybody had some hard times? Some trying times? And it seemed like, God, where are you? God, where are you, God? The season of life in which we're going in of uncertainty. I mean, you, you, you used to having more than enough. And now it's like, I'm just, I'm just having enough now. And, now I, and enough is not even enough anymore, Bishop. What do I do now, God, in this season of my life? God, now that the ones in which I would go to and are no longer there. And the ones I call don't even answer the phone. Oh, God, what now? What now? Somebody say now. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Give God an able praise in here. And, and, and yeah, <laughs> while you're clapping your hand, can you show this young lady on the saxophone some love and those on the drums and the musicians some love at this time? Sister Angie, everybody, just show them some love. And all the young people that were on the service today. Can you show Sister Serenity did a welcome and Brother Eric and, and, and come on, Brother Stephen and, and my brother Ortez brung the word. Come on, somebody. Show the, all the young people. Can you show the young people some love? Yeah, they were on praise and worship. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. I first give an honor to God who's ahead of my life. Amen. Yeah, you say that again, bro. God is a good God. (laughs) See, you got to go through something in life to understand what that means, that God is a good God. And somebody say, that yes, he is, mean they done been through some things. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on their side... I'm not talking about another message. I'm not talking about another minister or another evangelist. I'm talking about some of us was in some real deep stuff. And we realized that if it had not been for Christ, 
We realize if it had not been for Jesus, we realize if it had not been for the blood of the Lord, we realize if it had not been for them hanging him high and them, them stretching him wide and him. Look at somebody and say, I realize, I realize. I give honor to Bishop and Lady Robinson at this time. Can you show them some love? Amen to our pastors, our leaders of this fine church. To each and every one of you that's here, to my family, to my wife, to my children. Amen. I got to get myself together. And, and I was telling, she said, can y'all show Shekinah some love too? She don't like it, but I get it. I get a little emotional when I see my children doing things. I know, I mean, I, I praise God for your children. <laughs> but when my children do it and they actually get done, I get happy. Okay. Ain't no shame in my game. We go up there with papers and notes. And then in the bottom of it, like, you better do this. <laughs> All right. Let's don't be ashamed. Listen, we're trying to get the young people to a place to where they are learning it for themselves. The Holy Ghost just don't happen overnight. They got to learn how to effectively use it. Some of us still use the index in the Bible. Y'all stop. Okay. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the 18th through the 21st verse. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and a river in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackal and the ostrich, because I give water in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself, and they shall declare my praises. And if I could just, you know, Ortez just taught me something, so let me just do it now. The Bible, message Bible says. <laughs> this is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean and, and cars a path through the pounding waves. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and then they can't get up. They're snuffed out like many candles. Forget about what happened. Look at somebody and say, forget about it. Don't keep going over old history. <laughs> That's a word for somebody by itself. Be alert, be present. I'm about to do a new, brand new thing. Somebody say a brand new thing. It's bursting out. Do you see it bursting? If you see it bursting, make some noise in here. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? If you don't see it, there's something wrong with you. There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the bad lanes. Wild animals will say thank you. The coyotes and the buzzards, because I provide water in the desert, rivers through the sun-banked earth. Drinking water for the people I choose, the people I made, especially myself, a people custom made to praise me. If I had to add a title to this, it is now my season. Look at somebody say, it's my now season. Look at somebody else, they can't see you now. Just say, it's my now season. I know what I look like. I know you know my story. I know you know what I've been through. I know, I know what you assume about me. But I'm here to let you know from this day moving forward that I'm living in the now. Father, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you because you do all things well, Lord. And at this time, I ask you to decrease, God, as you increase in this atmosphere. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say, God. Move how you want to move, God. This is your house, God. And God, as long as you move, God, we will follow, God. Lord, with every breath in our being, God, if you did it before, I believe you'll do it again. And I thank you in advance for what you're going to do now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Somebody holler now. Everyone in this place must be aware that God moves in dispensations. He moves in time and in seasons. He moves in this particular way because there are certain things that must precede the move of God. God just won't move, Bishop, because we may, we may miss some things. So there's some things in which we got to experience in life, young people, so that when we realize when we get to it and we get through it, our testimony would be that was nobody but the Lord who was on my side. And that's why we got to go through certain stuff that may appear to be hard for us. It may appear to be as if, you know, they, you, you got the testimony of they get no my nerves and oh God if that can you just leave me alone you got to go through some things and once you get through it God can then move 
Jesus could have came at any time, but the Bible declares that he came in the fullness of time. And when in the fullness of God time, God sent him. There were certain things that had to precede his coming, and, and then he would come. And, and when those things were in order, that's when he came. Somebody say he came. People of God, God reveals himself in timing. Revelations come through certain forms of timing. God gives us revelation that we cannot always comprehend. Has anybody ever asked God why? Oh, y'all super saved, y'all Jesus first cousin, I get it. Anybody ever ask God why? Why, God? Why, why me? Why am I going through this, God? Why am I having to experience what I'm experiencing? And if you like me, you a little bit more out there, too, because I'd be like, why this got to happen to me now? After I've done all I can, God, I'm going to church. Just to done. I done stayed. I ain't leave. I wanted to leave a million times, but I stayed, God. I gave, and I, God, I, I, I praised, and I worshiped, and I sang, and I preached, and I, I prayed some more. God I, God, I even kept my mouth shut when I wanted to say certain things. Don't holler, you tell on yourself. The way God chooses to reveal himself in this way, he reveals himself as a God that is above us. The scriptures say, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help, for all my help cometh from the Lord. That means that he is above us. That means because he is above us, he's looking down, seeing everything that is taking place, making sure it's happening in divine order. That's why, Darnell, we got to stop questioning and why God and when is this going to happen and why is this happening the way it's happening. It's happening this way because God wanted it to. People look, God, God is an intentional God. Say he's an intentional God. Everything he does is, is done with intentionality. God ain't just out here doing stuff just to do it for fun. He ain't out here just kind of just doing stuff for our entertainment. He ain't out here like a puppeteer making us move certain ways so because he's getting enjoyment out of it. God is setting us up for something. And all we got to do is get in alignment in the right place, be on the right time, in the right pew, on the right Sunday, with the right word, with a faithful heart, with a praise on our lips, clapping in our hands, stomping in our feet ready to get in line and do what God told us to do. God, I believe this is the very reason why I'm here today because God wants me to release a word not only to you but to people connected to you. People that you left at home that you wanted to be here that's not here today. The people that, that you haven't even come in contact yet. God wants you to have this word and I'm going to release this word. Can somebody just holler out now? I really want to break down what now looks like, what that really means, and, and be able to reflect on it for you. Because when you holler now, somebody in the audience or in the congregation or even up in the pulpit saying, what you mean now? Do you know what I left at home? Do you know what I got to go back home to? Do you know it's been a long time since I pulled up to the gas station and said, fill it up? <laughs> Do you know what the last year of my life looked like? Do you know the last few months of my little, my child just told you she lost the job two weeks. Guess what? They called her back in two days and said, can you come back? We need you back in here because you was doing something that we wasn't able to do. We was wrong. We sorry. We'll never make that mistake again. I said, you better ask them for more money, if anything. You got to understand that God is going to use the enemy to set you up. All you got to do is be in the right place at the right time for God to be able to use you. And guess what? He going to make your enemy your footstool. He going to make them take it back. He going to use it for your good. That's why I say all things work together. For the good. You have to reflect on as a matter of fact. Many of us started out this year in 2023, and, and, and this year brought about many different changes for us. Many of us have been traumatized this year. Many of us have experienced, and we, we've been working on stuff that we lost. Many of us have forgot about our dreams, and many of us didn't get the grades that we wanted to get in school, or many of us found out who our real friends are. Many of us didn't get the healing that we wanted to get. Many of us didn't get the sleep that we wanted to have. But how many know that God is still a good God? And, and if I could be honest, I just done been through some stuff that pastor it just done messed me up 
Can't nobody be honest in here with me, but it just done messed me up. I had times of uncertainty. I have times of being lost. I was messed up, but thank God for being a keeper that will keep my mind when I can't keep my mind. He'll keep my body when I can't keep my body. He will keep me in perfect. Somebody say peace. Yet I believe that, that all these things that have happened up to this point have happened for a very specific reason, Brother Claude. Listen, I believe that God allowed these things to happen so that we will finally turn to him. What do you mean turn to him? What I'm saying, Pastor, is there is a big difference between going to church and knowing God. I don't got to no longer wait till Sunday, Angie. I ain't got to wait till Sunday to get my deliverance. I ain't got to wait till Sunday to get a prayer through. I ain't got to wait till Sunday to hear from God. I wake up on Monday knowing that God is good. If I need him on Tuesday, he come through for me. I pray with my babies on Wednesday, and God will answer my prayer that way when Sunday comes. Somebody holler when Sunday comes. All of my worry and all of my pride. Y'all know Daryl Coley said it. When Sunday, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter into his courts with praise. What's wrong with some of y'all? When Sunday come, it's meant for hand clapping. It's meant for feet stomping. It's meant for worshiping. Stop waiting till Sunday to get through to God right in your home. You better get through to him now. You see, people of God, now, I believe that God is doing something in this ministry. God has got us in alignment. I believe that God has us where he can hear from us now. And, and he has a, intentionally moved us into a realm, into a new season of life. Somebody holler now. Now that our hearts are properly aligned, now that our focus is where it needs to be, now that we move beyond foolishness and playing games, now that we are committed to ministry, now that we are committed to hearing a word from God, now we are committed to praise and worship, now we are committed to young people, now we are committed to the elderly people, now we are committed to the musicians, now we are committed to delivering the word. Somebody said now. I believe there's an urgency to accomplish everything that God has in place. We ain't got time to move slowly no more. We got to fast track this thing because some of us have been moving real slow and time is winding up. I know y'all been saying God been doing it. God, it's almost the end. It's almost the end. You better hurry up. And I done got the 40 and I'm still waiting for the end. But I am here telling you that you ain't got to worry about the end of the world because the end of the world happened to somebody last night. Somebody holler now. There's an urgency, people of God, now. We are about, watch this, we are about to move into a season where things that we've been waiting for is going to manifest right here in this place. Things we've been praying about is going to come to pass. Things we've been praying for is about to happen. People we've been praying for is about to get an answer to prayer. The places we've been praying about is about doors we need open. It's about to open finances that we need. I'll show you. It's about to happen. Somebody holler now. now. So what you got to do, people of God, is learn how to speak over your own life. I learned to speak over my life. I, I've learned I didn't, I didn't need to hear or, or wait for Bishop to call me. I didn't, I didn't need the first lady to have me on a mind. I, I didn't have to call nobody. I learned to look in the mirror and encourage myself and say, you shall live and not die. You shall be the lender and not the borrower. You shall be a great father. You shall be a great husband. You shall be a great leader. You going to live to see it happen. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, now. now. Now I know some of y'all, you used to it, you used to it, they used to it, young people. They used to hearing it in church. What we always heard was wait on him. Wait on the Lord. And just wait on him. He, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Just wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him. Anybody ever got a wait on him word? Can I tell you something? I need you to start getting ready because the wait is over. There ain't no more delay. Ain't no more delay. We ain't got to wait no more. I'm talking about we about to come into a place, a realm, that Bishop, you can speak it, and it's going to happen. Now watch this. This is going to mess people up. 
I said, you speak it. <laughs> I didn't say me. I said, you speak it, and it's going to happen. All we got to do is be in line where we need to be, and you're going to be the cup. God going to pour into you. You're overflowing. Somebody holler now. I came to speak in life today. I came, I came to help understand what now looks like. In the 43rd the, the chapter of the book of Isaiah, we find that the people of God are on the tail end and they're on the exiting period. They were traumatized. They had been in captive. They had been going through things. And it's a really direct result of what they did on their own. They had sinned against the law of God. And, and as that doing that, there were consequences. Somebody had consequences. God allowed this to happen to them. As a result, they were traumatized, and they had been taken captive by their experience. And there was pain that was experienced. But in the midst of all the pain, God reminds them that you are still my children. You are still special, and I'm still going to do what I said I'll do. Even though you did what you wanted to do, I am a God that will fulfill my promise unto you. Look at somebody and say, God is a promise keeper. It is amazing how even we mess up that God will still continuously be there for us. It's amazing how we still do what we want to do and God will be patient with us. It's amazing how we will say what we want to say, touch what we want to touch, our feet go where they want to go and God be right there still saying I love you. You are my child. I will keep you. I got you. I got my arm wrapped around you. That's why some of y'all ain't die out there. That's why some people didn't overdose. That's why the bullet missed you. That's why that car accident didn't didn't help you because God was standing right. That's enough reason to be up on your feet right now or waving your hand that that thing did not happen to you. I dare you to testify to somebody just for two seconds and say it didn't happen. It didn't work. The evil plan of the devil, it didn't work for me. Those sleepless nights, I was suicidal. I was depressed. I wanted to give up. I wanted not live anymore. But it didn't work. Somebody holler, it didn't work. God says, uh, y'all sit down, y'all scaring me. God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Uh, God is about to bring an end to the madness. Uh, God is about to make trouble cease. Uh, God is about to turn things around, Bishop. Oh, God is about to come through. Uh, he may not come when I want him, but I serve him on time. God. Remember, remember, somebody holler now. And so the prophet Isaiah, the prophet, he gives a word to them. And he says, no matter how bad it's been in your life, no matter how chaotic, God is getting ready to do something in your life. No matter what y'all did to end up where you are, no matter why you are going through what you're going through, no matter what your child is facing right now, so what they, where they need to be, y'all just keep praying for them. Because sooner or later, God is about to show up in their life. Life. They got to go through what they going through so that their testimony would all oh, will be if it had not been for the Lord that delivered me from alcohol. If it had not been for the Lord that delivered me from sexual morality. If it had not. And I get it. We don't start out knowing why we're saying Jesus. We, we don't start out knowing why we're calling on the Holy Ghost. We don't start out knowing that stuff. But I promise you, if you keep on living, you're going to experience why they're telling you to say Jesus. I promise you, if you keep on living, you're going to be on your school bus ready to lose your mind. But the power of the Holy Ghost. It's going to seize you and keep you. So now when everybody else acting up, you standing there in perfect peace. You see, in order to walk in this season, this, this new season, I need you to help you understand what is necessary. You just can't get into this season of now and not do anything. If it didn't work last year, what makes you think it's going to work? If it didn't work for you, why are you telling me how to... Oh. If you ain't got it yet, why are you worrying about where I'm at? Somebody holler now. That, that people ain't, 
They ain't like that. You got my back? Okay. And the reason God has you here today is because you're willing to, to declare there's a benediction on the one season and declare that, that, that you're putting order to the next. And the only thing that you could do is say bye-bye to the one season and say hello to the next one. I am here to let you know that you can't take parts of the old season into the new season. I'm going to clap all by myself right there. I can't be saved and delivered in church on Sunday, but just as soon as Monday come and people that don't go to my church, I'm sitting in the office with them acting like my old self. I can't be sweet in front of my parents and then I get to school and I'm acting like anything but that. My mom used to tell us, when you leave this house, you represent this house. You got to represent the way in which we, we, we uphold ourselves because there's something attached to your name. There's something attached to this household. And you got to understand is that you got a praying parent or a grandparent or a guardian that's over you praying for you. You got to realize is the reason why they calling on Jesus and you see them hollering and shouting and lifting their hand because they are literally standing in between you and death. They are standing in between you and fighting. They are standing in between you and failing. Somebody holler, I'm standing now. Don't let the pain of one season interfere with the promise of the next. (laughs) I can't let my past dictate how my future is going to be. I got to let go of what's behind me, and I got to reach forward to what's in front of me. And let me help you here. Young people, you just started. Let me help you. In pressing, you're going to have to let some people go. In pressing and moving forward and in growing in God, there are some people that ain't going where you're going to. There are some people that were in your life just for a season. And in that season, they were there for a reason. They may not be there in the next one. That's between them and God. You learn the lesson of what you need to learn. That's why every relationship that I ever had in my life, I always learned something from it. Because if I learned something from it, I knew that if it wasn't good for me, I wasn't going to bring it into the... Let me get back on this. It would be really easy to let trauma and those experiences... Cause them to die in their pain. The text is not suggesting completely forget about what happened, but you got to learn from about what happened to you. I remember one time when I was a child, my mom was like, don't touch the stove. (laughs) My mom said, it's hot, don't touch it. You would have thought that was enough for me to listen to what she said and heed the warning. But me being who I am, and you shaking your head so you're probably the same way, Shekinah, the very thing that she said don't do, curiosity hit me, and guess what I did? And touch? No, I didn't. Because let me tell you what happened. When I went to touch the stove, somebody's hand grabbed me. And that hand saved me from doing the thing that was going to hurt me. Oh, y'all missing that. My mama grabbed my hand and said, didn't I tell you not to touch it? Because it's going to hurt you. That is how God is with us. God will let you get so far, and before that thing totally destroys you, or it takes you out of here, God will reach out and... Look at somebody say, he grabbed me, he grabbed me. God grabbed me right in the nick of time, right before I lost my mind, right before I lost everything, before I lost my house, before I lost my dignity. God reached out and he pulled me way up. I know, I know you like, you, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're a reader. You like books. Let me get you something. Let me get you a book I read. It said Rick Warren, a pastor, he says, we are the products of our past, but we are not meant to be prisoners of it. Yes, I went through it. Yes, I experienced it. But you won't have hold over me. Yes, I did it. I acknowledge it. I signed my name off. Yes, I touched it. Yes, I tasted it. Yes, I went there. But it won't dictate who I am now. Okay. People of God, it is here that we must realize and we must really get to know 
what we need to know. The same God that brought them through the Red Sea, the same God that did it before, he can do it again. And if I could be honest in here, there would be times in which I would go through some difficult challenges and, and, and I would almost want to give up and throw in a towel, but, but God seemed to just pick me up and say, it's okay, it's, it's okay to keep on going. I know you don't understand it right now. I know it don't make sense right now, but I'm about to do a new thing in you. Look at somebody and say a new thing. So he says this, do not remember the old things. What he's suggesting is, do not make a, a, a memorial of it. Don't sit in a place of grief. Don't, don't, don't sit in a place of pain. Every time, every time we talk to you and we bring up the great things that's happening in your life, you could be like, yes, I just bought a house. God is good. I got a new job. But God, I'm living better than I ever lived before. I'm in good health. I got healed. And, 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 and you know, medication, I ain't taking it no more. But, yeah, I'm still a little tired. Don't live in the butt, live in the now. Don't live in back then, live right now. Stay right here. Stay current. Don't keep going back there. Look at somebody and say, get up here. Don't go back there. Soren Kierkegaard, he said, life can only be understood backwards. But we must live it forwards. I mean, I know what's in front of me. I know what's behind me. It's the crazy part, it's kind of. I mean, I know what's next. I don't know what's going. I'm almost like this, this caterpillar crawling on the ground. And, but one thing I know for sure is that I'm in this cocoon and, and I'm trying to bust out of it. And I don't know when I'm going to bust out of it. But one thing I know for sure, I'll never crawl another day in my life. So as long as I got to stay wrapped up, I'll stay right here. Because as long as I got to stay wrapped up in God, I'll stay here. Because God is preparing me for something that's about to take place now. Look at somebody and say, now, people of God, and I'm almost through this, change your mind, you'll change your methodology. You change your way of thinking, you'll change the way you do stuff. If you change your way of thinking, you'll start looking at your situation differently, and you'll start seeing that you got your situation, and your situation don't got you. Me and my wife had a conversation, and we vowed that, yet. Yeah, look, I know we just lovable, and we just look, we be having some real deep conversations. Mine's a little bit more deeper than hers is, but you know, real deep ones. But one thing we vowed is that we will never disagree with one another about a situation. We're going to stand right here together and we're going to disagree with that situation. Y'all missed that. I just helped you. I just gave you some real good stuff there. I'm not going to disagree with you, Shekinah, about anything. I want you to come over here and stand with me and we're going to tackle whatever we need to tackle together. That's what the church has got to get to in this now season. That we all going to stand in this together. That we all going to be right here together. Ain't no big I and little you. If Bishop going, I can go. If Bishop can walk, I can walk. If Bishop can stand, I can stand. If Bishop don't eat, I don't got to eat. If Bishop don't get it, I don't need it. They ain't like that neither. I got you. Okay. God says, the only way. And going to let new stuff come your way if you get in the mindset of being able to handle it. Change your mind, change your methodology. Change the way you're doing it. Tell somebody you got to change the way you're doing it. God says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. And God is always moving. Somebody say God is moving. If God is moving, then you must, be under, you must understand that God is continuously moving on my behalf. The Bible says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? Watch this. Behold, watch this. Pay attention. I'm doing a new thing. Somebody say new thing. You've been doing it so long this way, and I'm trying to do a new thing. Somebody say new thing. I'm going to come to you like this, and it's going to spring up outside of you, and you shall not know it. The question is not, is God moving? The question is, do you know it? God always moving. I don't know what's wrong with y'all that say, oh, I ain't feeling this service today. That ain't got nothing to do with God. That's everything to do with you. Come on. Come on. Because God move every Sunday. God move when ain't nobody here. Ain't none of y'all got to show up. I still dance and shout. You are the problem. Ain't no problem with God moving. You better ask yourself, what's wrong with me?
Told y'all wasn't going to like me after a while. <laughs> Some of you discover this year. Watch this as a word for you. And then I'm going to get up out of here. Some of you will discover before the end of this year why you had to go through everything you went through last year. Some of you would have been made clear to you why as a child you had to go through what you went through before the end of this year is out. Some of you, before the end of this year is hell, will understand why your child is behaving the way in which they be. Why is your job acting the way? Why is your health acting the way it's happening? I believe God, and God is literally going to reveal to us this year why it's got to happen. Is anybody in here going through something? Watch this. Anybody feel behind right now? You just feel a little, just be honest, slip your hand up, just, you know, you feel a little bit behind right now. I should be a little bit farther than I am right now. Things should be going a little bit smoother right now. I'll raise my hand. Listen, listen, I got a story. I might have told you this before. The next move of God will be God's best move in your life. Anybody believe that? Look at somebody and say, the next move of God will be God's best move in my life. I told you the story about Brad. Brad came to me. He's at my job. One of, one of the young people I worked with, Brad said, Mr. Burden, he was playing chess. We were playing checkers. It was one of them. I was probably playing checkers because I don't know how to play chess. He said, listen, Mr. Burden, he said, the best chess player, the best checkers player knows that each move made on the board is, determines the fate of the player on the other side. So you got to be very strategic at your, your adversary, the person in which you're playing with. You got you to pay attention and learn how they move. Somebody say, learn how they move. So in order to win this game, you, you got to be a mastered strategist. The object of the game of checkers is to move forward to get to the other side and be crowned a, all right? And when you get crowned a king, you get certain benefits of being crowned and doing the work of getting from one side to the other. So now as a king, I now have a certain control of the board. <laughs> oh, God. Then Brad said, likewise, every move, I said, Brad, listen, let me stop you right there. Because what you just said sparked something in my spirit. It said, Brad, look, likewise, every move of God makes in your life is better than the last move that he made before. I said, because God is the master of ascension. Ascension is being strategically moving in from front to back to side to side. I said, Brad, God as king can move forward and then jump backwards and move you back forward again. Oh, God. There are some people that's ahead of you right now in 2023. And God sent me here to tell you that he about to jump you from the back all the way to the front. The Lord is faithful. God said, I'm about to be a God of ascension. You may not know what I'm doing or when I'm going to come, but know when I show up before the end of this year, I will be on time. Somebody say on time. Listen, people of God, there are some people that's ahead of you that's going to question, how did you get to where you are right now? All you got to do is say, the Lord was faithful. The Lord always reminded me that he'll never leave me, nor will he forsake me. God says, you don't even have to understand how I moved you the way I moved you. All you got to do is put your seatbelt on and enjoy the ride. God said, don't worry about how I'm going to do it. Just know that I am going to do it. So that job that you've been praying for, just get ready for it, and don't just get ready for it, but get ready for it now. That child that you've been praying for, don't just get ready for it, but get ready for it. That financial blessing that you're in need of, don't just get ready for it, but get ready for it. God said, I'm going to reach back, grab you, and jump you to the front of the line. I'm going to have people look at you and say, how in the world did that happen? And your answer is simply going to be, I don't know. I was just in the hand of the king. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, Bishop. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, or I feel preaching now. Oh, ye gates, uh, the everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't sleep on me. I might be in the back right now, 
but God's about to reach back and jump me forward. Uh, the Bible says, oh God, uh, for I consider that suffering uh, of this present time uh, is not worthy to compare to the glory that will be revealed to us. Uh, what is he saying? Uh, all the hell that you're going through ain't going to compare to the blessing that's about to come your way. Uh, just hold on. Put your seatbelt on because God is about to take us somewhere. Look at somebody and say, I'm going higher. Gonna shout it right there. I'm trying to tell y'all. It don't matter what your past look like. God is about to drop down in our life. Uh, and he's about to take us to a place that not even we can comprehend. Uh, this God will make the best moves. Uh, don't focus on your current situation. But focus on the ultimate destination. Uh, because I can't stay back here. Because I'm reaching forward to what's in front of me. Uh, I can't stay right here. That's why I got to let some people go. Because they ain't meant to go forward with me. Uh, that's why I got to keep my bags packed. Uh, because where God is about to take me. Me, it just might happen now. God said, look, I'm doing a new thing. Look, I'm doing a new thing. What God is about to give you will still have the tag on it. What God is about to give you, the key ain't even been made for it yet. What God is about to come through with, the doctors don't even know it yet. What God is about to do in this now season, oh God, y'all don't even see it or comprehend it yet. Somebody say now. Somebody better holler now for their house. Now. Somebody holler now for your child. Somebody holler now for your family. Somebody holler now for yourself. What God is about to do in this now season. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. We can't even comprehend how he gonna do. Y'all, I can run right now. God told me to tell you. You will no longer have to go through the recycling phase. You ain't going to have to recycle nothing no more. Ain't no more hand-me-downs for you. It ain't, it ain't no more. I got to wait for them to be done with it before I get it. I ain't got to wait for somebody to get out of the way so I can. God says what you about to get ain't even been made yet. They can't even comprehend it yet. It wasn't a miracle till Lazarus died. God says... I can't give it to you yet. <laughs> God. God said, I can't move yet. Because there won't be enough glory. <laughs> in it. This ain't about you. <laughs> oh, God. What you're going through right now ain't even about you. Jesus, Lord, I hear you. God. Jesus, Lazarus, the one you love has died. Come on, Jesus, we got to, no, I ain't going yet. I can't move yet, I can't go there yet. What you mean, you love him, that's the, you love him, you love his family. What you mean you ain't going yet? I can't go yet where he died. Come on, let's go. He could have easily went when they asked him to. But he had this, yo, God, it's going to bless somebody. He had to set the atmosphere, Nikki. He had, to, he had to set the atmosphere. He had to let all the haters come around him. He had to give him enough time to fly in to watch. He had to let them get their money right so they can get there. They had to let them get there. All the haters and they say the doubters that said it would never be. He had to watch them get there. Now that they're there and everybody there around you, God said, now I'm going to take your not yet and I'm going to turn it into a now. Hmm. That's why some of y'all stuck where you are. It ain't got nothing to do with you. God said, not yet. I can't do it yet. I'm going to do it, but I can't do it yet. I know you've been asking for it, but I can't do it yet. You will know when your yet turns into a now because the struggle will be over. He's giving some of y'all some time to get it right. Some of y'all. The house still going to have the tag on it, Jesus 
The car, still going to have the tag on it. <laughs> the job, still going to have the tag on it. <laughs> that man, that woman, that one that's going to come and, and they work together to build, still going to have the tag on it. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't ready for me yet. Oh, God. God said, your peace of mind, still going to have the tag on it. <laughs> that love that you need, still going to have the tag on it. Those sleep at night, still going to have the tag on it, Angie. My peace, still got the tag on it. I'm going to have peace. That passes all understand. They look at somebody and say, what's coming to me? Still got the tag on it. God said, look, look, get ready for this. Everything that happened in your life was getting you ready for this place. God is about to give you, watch this, because you've been praying without ceasing. God is about to give you new, Jesus, new opportunities. New relationships, new friends, new home, new sleep, new, new, new. Somebody how new? New. Okay, look, I know some of y'all, look, y'all looking at me like he crazy. What in the world is going on? Because you are not weary and well-doing. In due season, you shall reap if you tell your neighbor, well, since I'm due, it might as well be new. If I'm due, I'm doing this my due season. I want it new. Now look at somebody sitting up there. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, yeah, man, hurry up. It's time to go. And I'm, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it all before. I just want to know if God is going to do it, when is it going to happen? Look at your name and say, have you not been in the same service that I've been in? Didn't you hear the minister tell you that it's about to happen? If you believe God is about to have a now anointing on your life, come on and get on your feet, lift your hands, and holler now. My now moment, my now miracle, my now blessing, what I've been waiting on, the wait is over. Young people, holler now. I'm not the church of tomorrow. I'm the church of now. My house gonna get it together. My family gonna get it together. My job gonna get it together. My church gonna get it together. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Come on, clap your hands all over this building. Come on, clap your hands if you believe God for a now blessing. If you believe God for a now miracle. If you believe God to be a now way maker. A miracle worker, a mind regulator, a burden bearer, a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Give God some now praise. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, now. I thank God. Somebody holler now, now faith. Somebody say now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I don't know what in this atmosphere that you are in need of, that you've been praying for. If it's a financial blessing, God told me to release that it's about to happen wait till the battle is over shout don't wait to get back home shout uh, I'm out of here I can't do this with y'all because I run all by myself I want somebody anybody that believe that God will have this thing worked out for you by the time you get back home today to give God a right now praise. Right now. God, I need you. Right now. God, make a way. Right now. God, do it. Right now. God, deliver. Right now. God set free right now. I can 
smile now. I can laugh now. I got joy now. I got happiness now. My healing now. My breakthrough. My son. No need to worry what tonight is gonna bring. I ain't even waiting for tomorrow. It'll be all over. Come on, give God some praise. Hey! 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 I can't mess with y'all because we'll tear this whole place up. There is such a move of God about to hit this atmosphere. God is about to move. I don't know how, but God is about to show y'all about say. God is about to move now. God is about to deliver now. God is about to set free now. God is about to come through now. God is about to lay hands now. God is about to set center stage now. We open up the doors. Come on, y'all help with the, the altar workers. Come on, don't quickly, quickly. Come on, you know who you are now. Move now, move, move now. Everybody that's supporting and assisting now, come with the anointing and the power of God, believing that God can do it right now. It ain't in you, it's in God. God is about to do this thing. God is about to turn it around. God is about to do the work now. As they are coming up, you know what you stand in need of. It's by your faith that you come up here that it's going to happen. It's by your faith believing that God is going to change your situation now. If you're watching online, I'm believing with you now. If you're listening on the radio, I believe with you now. Somebody holler now. Come on up here if you need to touch and agree. You want to be introduced to Jesus? Come on up here now. They will introduce you to him. The one that lived, the one that died, the one that rose again. The God that we believe in. Come on now. Come on, everybody, now. Come on. I need every young person in here. Is this okay? I want every young person. Come on, come on. Every young person. Get the young people and move them. Come on. Move them over. Come on. Every young person. Have them come on over. Every young person now, every, come on. Don't wait, don't wait. Come on, Darnell, you help with this too, come on. Every young person, I don't care if you got to come on up, come on. I ain't worried about the instruments, I'm not worried about none of that. I'm worried about the move of God that will take place now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, stretch out, come on. Stretch out now, come on, stretch. Y'all move now. <laughs> Follow the leader. <laughs> the leader say sway, you sway. The leader say move, you move. Now. Come on, I need some praying people in this place. How do y'all lose it so fast? That is beyond me. Come on. Come on. These are your future. These are your young people. Yeah. Two. The enemy is waiting to take them out. Because he see the promise of God on their life. These are your future pastors. These are your future ministers. These are your future evangelists. Your future teachers. Your future members. Their parking lot attendants. Security. We're financial advisors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Start praying with them. Come on. Come on. Start praying with them. Go up to them and pray with them. Go ahead. Just go ahead and lay hands on them. Come on. Believe in the power of God that's inside of you. Come on. Come on. Go. God do it. God do it. God do it. 